Welcome back to the Gridiron Show. Delighted to say that we take it for granted almost at this point, as I say, as always, it's a Super Bowl winning head coach who's joining us after all uh, with our friends at X-Tech Pads. It's coach Brian Billick. I noticed the pad in the background next to the Super Bowl trophy. Excellent work, sir. You got to advertise a little bit. That's right. <laughs> um, uh, before we get to there's quite a lot to, to cover today, but before anything else, a topic we've discussed a lot over this season, the Baltimore Ravens finally get that playoff win. It did feel like a bit of a silly narrative, maybe, but now it doesn't exist anymore. No, and that's typical. I mean, it was they had not come back from behind by more than 10. Uh, they had, could not win a playoff game with Lamar Jackson. Well, yeah, check off both boxes, and now you move on to the next one. And the next one will be, well, when will he win a championship? But that's understandable. That's the way it is. We said the same thing about Peyton Manning. It was, okay, when was he going to get the win? When's he going to get the championship? And and that's fair. Uh, it's, it's just from the standpoint that he's such a unique talent. They're such a good team. Uh, I think they've got a great chance this year. Uh, it's going to be a good game against the Buffalo Bills. But boy, when he ran off that 48-yard, I mean, there's two minutes in the game. They're down by 10. Everything just seems, okay, This we've seen this scenario before. It's just not going to happen. Tennessee had done a nice job of kind of limiting him, uh, particularly on the outside. And then he, they, you know, he just takes one time. And he got shot out of a cannon on that third down, a 48-yard run for a touchdown, then came out to open the second half with a 70-yard, 75-yard drive for a touchdown. And at that point, it was game, set, and match. What did you think of his approach? Because the whole week, he, he he didn't back down or bat away those questions. He, he kind of met it head on and was like, no, I want to win a game. I'm disappointed we haven't yet. Yeah, when those that – and I've, I've been around just Lamar just a little bit when I do their preseason games, and obviously my association with the, the organization and visiting with people, he is such a genuine personality. He really is. I mean this in a complimentary way. He's just a kid, and he's just out playing ball. And he loves being with his teammates. He loves playing. I don't think all the bigger picture, peripheral, all the things that, you know, that, that go on here with the constant chatter, I just don't think that seeps into him. I think he's just a young kid that uh, likes to hang around the gym and play ball, and, and that uh, shows up on the field. Love that. Uh, as you know, we like to talk coaching, head coaching with you, uh, and this situation that's developing in Philadelphia over the last couple of days uh, just – blanket what what have you made of Doug Peterson leaving the organization this one was a bit of a shocker because Doug Peterson uh, Mr. Lurie the owner Harry Roseman they're they're kind of family I mean he was he played there he was with Andy Reid's staff when when they let Andy go uh you know they flirted with they had Chip Kelly for a while didn't work out so what they do they reached back into the family brought Doug Peterson back and and won a Super Bowl with it so, you know, there's so many ties there. This, this one surprises me a little bit. Uh, it sounds like there are the, a lot of voices going on, as, as Doug Peterson's quoted as saying. I just got tired of people telling me what to do. Uh, and there were a lot of voices in there in terms of who they had in the organization, what they were trying to do. Where they fell on the Carson Wentz, no Carson Wentz, yes on Carson Wentz, Jalen Hurts, how do we go forward? I mean, at the end of the day, uh, the organization has to take responsibility. They just didn't have the players. The offensive line was a mess. They had no wide receivers, regardless of, you know, there was nothing to support Carson Wentz. I still think Carson Wentz is a good football player. Um, so obviously there was a divide, whether it was Mr. Lurie, Howie Roseman, uh, Doug Peterson, whichever way it went, and they just decided to to part ways, which was a surprise because they they were a tighter family than that, and it so you know quickly in the in the uh, shadow of uh, just winning a Super Bowl three years ago. How important and how difficult is that balance to reach? And uh, kind of off the back of that, does it highlight the importance for these people who are out there finding their new head coaches, finding their new GMs right now, making sure that relationship is very defined from day one. Yeah, it's it's huge, and it, and it is a relationship. It is a marriage. Uh, it has to be a shared vision for where you want to go. It doesn't mean you agree on everything. It doesn't mean you you don't argue, and we used to call it scrimmage things around a little bit. Ozzy Newsom and I would do go back and forth all the time. But but from my own personal experience, what, what was huge was the trust that Ozzy Newsom had, I had in him, and he had in me, and – the respect for the job that they had to do. That, that obviously Ozzy's job entailed certain things, my job entailed certain things. And it's vital that you respect those parameters of which the other guy has to work under. And it sounds like 
in Philly, maybe that those lines were getting crossed. Everybody was deciding how Doug Peterson should do his job. And if that's the case, then yeah, it is time for Doug Peterson to go. But if you're going to do the same thing with the next guy, then you might as well keep that list of guys you're going to interview because you're going to be interviewing another one because it's going to end up the same way. Management has to find the guy they, they want, create that shared vision, and then let him do his job. I wanted to talk to you about stepping away from coaching because, I mean, there are guys in the league like Bill Belichick who we think might coach till literally they shift from this mortal coil. But uh, Chuck Pagano made the decision to retire by the sounds of it today. Um, We didn't get to address it on the show because it happened in the last couple of hours. But uh, I'm assuming Chuck's probably someone you know came into Baltimore after you were there. Yes, Making- I know Chuck very well. Uh, and in fact, I knew Chuck when, when I used to recruit uh, Colorado when I was at Stanford. His dad uh, is a very famous coach and co- high school coach in Colorado. So I knew Chuck uh, way back then. And, and yeah, I think you see it with Gary Kubiak. Uh, you see it with uh, a number of coaches. Uh, you know, you, at some point, this job can wear you out. And, and particularly after the year we just went through, uh, that you can see where there's some coaches going, you know what, I, I need a break here. And maybe it's their circumstances. Maybe it's just what's going on. I've always said, notwithstanding a Pete Carroll and a Bill Belichick and these young guys that do a great job, uh, it is a young man's game. Uh, Nick Saban is 69 years old. That's an interesting one to me to see if Nick Saban, I mean, how many national championships does he have to win? (laughs) Does Nick at 69, and he could name his spot, have still have that itch. He failed in the NFL in Miami. Of course, he'd come in with absolute control. Um, there are some attractive jobs. And by that, I mean the quarterback situation. It's interesting. There's seven jobs. Five of them have pretty good quarterbacks. And the other two, Jacksonville and New York, have the first and second round pick with a couple good quarterbacks on, on the stage for the draft. So uh, there's some attractive jobs. And and so, you know, does does Nick Saban at some point? I'm, I'm waiting to hear that rumor start <laughs> that that uh, now if he's smart and Nick is it's look he's got everything going in Alabama life's good why would I take on that that challenge why would I take on that headache uh but yeah this is a young man's game and I can see uh, it's hard for me I'm 66 years old and I can't imagine still being part of that grind and, and I look at someone like, say, Mike Nolan, who has had the head coaching yeah. opportunities, has moved around, has now left from the Cowboys as they bring Dan Quinn in. And he said, like, I'm grateful for the opportunity and I'm looking for the next one. And you think there must be a point where you do think to yourself, do you know what? I'm you know, right. I talked with Mike and Mike was on my staff. I've known Mike for years. He was on my staff in Baltimore. Great coach. He and his wife, Kathy, are just good people. Mike's a ball coach. I mean, his dad was a coach. He grew up a coach's son. Uh, it's just what he wants to do. And he'll go back and be a position coach. You know, obviously he'd like to get a coordinator's job, um, but he did a great job in uh, New Orleans uh, with Dennis Allen uh, and and uh, just got into that, you know, buzzsaw of a situation in Dallas and and took the hit for it. Um, but yeah, you no, know, Mike, and, and he's, I'm sure he's on a contract for a couple more years and, and coaches contracts are guaranteed. So he's going to get paid. So he's actually, wherever he goes, he's going to get, He's going to do it for free because he's going to get paid. It's offset in the NFL. If you have an existing contract, you go someplace else, you, you, they, you, the club offsets the difference. Usually it's on the other way that if the club's going to pay you X and the new club's going to play you X plus, they pay the X and, and the other club plays the, the plus. Uh, in this instance, I can't imagine he would get a positional job that paid as much as the coordinator's job. I don't know what that number is in Dallas. So he, for the next two years, I'm guessing, he'd be working for free. That's not a bad, uh, not a bad coach to be able to bring in someone with that level of experience who also isn't costing yeah. you any money. That yes. is a shrewd franchise. He'll go and get Mike yes, if he's willing to drop back. Um, what are you looking forward to with division around weekend on the horizon? That's great weekend of football and great matchups uh, across the board. Uh, you know, begin with, with Baltimore and, and the bills two dynamic young quarter. It's interesting. We've got three future on one side of the ticket. We have three future hall of fame guaranteed quarterbacks and Aaron Rodgers. Tom Brady and Drew Brees. On the other side of the equation, we have three of the the best young, you know, usurpers that want to rip that crown off the head of those guys in Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, and Josh Allen. And you can even throw Baker Mayfield in there. Uh, so this is uh, this is going to be interesting. I think Baltimore and and the Bills. Um, 
both dynamic quarterbacks, uh, both very good teams. Last time they played last year in week 14, they held Lamar at only 40 yards in 11, uh, 11 carries. Now he threw three touchdown passes, but, and it was a seven point game. Uh, Josh Allen did not play well last year. He's playing a lot better right now. So this, this game's going to be interesting to see if Baltimore can indeed, um, with the way he's throwing the ball down the field now with Stefan Diggs. He's got this young kid, Davis, Gabriel Davis, that's really emerged on the scene. Their defense is playing pretty good. And I think we'll take a page out of the Tennessee pay- playbook in that, that okay, we're going to make Lamar, like they did last year, we're going to make Lamar stay horizontal. We're not going to let him get outside the edge. Now, like Tennessee learned, you better do it every down because one time now, and boom, boy, he's off and, and, uh, and running. So uh, I, that's going to be a fascinating matchup. Breeze and Brady, you know, there's, I just can't conceive that it's going to be like the last time they played where Norris just blew them out. I've, I've been saying all week, I think Bruce Arians and Tom Brady, conspiracy theorist-wise, they, they, this was by design, that they laid down for three quarters of the season, <laughs> going, okay, we're going we're gonna to trick everybody. And we're not going to play well. And then we're going to turn it on just at the right time because they are playing well. Uh, and, and the Tampa defense, I think, can, can uh, acquit itself well. They've got to take a page out of the Chicago playbook going, just don't give up the big play. Make them go the distance. Shorten the possessions. But now they have the, unlike Chicago, who didn't have the offense, Tampa Bay has the offense now to take advantage of it. So that, you know, from that standpoint, it's going to be a great game. Everybody's talking about the Rams and Green Bay. And, and do the, you would think, well, okay, in, in Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers playing so well. Really, do the Rams have a chance? What's their quarterback situation? But they keep coming back to that defense. Aaron Donald, that, that, that pressure in the middle. Jalen Ramsey, who will likely travel with Devontae Adams and be with him all day long. How much does that inhibit it? Does Aaron Rodgers get chased out? I mean, um, I, I, it's hard for me to see L.A. with their quarterback situation going into Green Bay and winning. Green Bay has been vulnerable against the run. So if they can crank the run up like they did against Seattle. So a uh, lot, of, lot of really good games this weekend. The very last thing I want to ask, Coach, because on our show this Sunday, uh, we are doing a 2018 first round redraft as part of the show in the buildup. So oh. I'm picking for the Browns at number one. Should I take Josh Allen there in my redraft? Wow. I, yeah. That again, everybody's talking about Josh Allen versus Lamar Jackson in, in the Q Factor, my book. We happened to take the 2018 draft and talk about that. And that was the interesting thing because all five players, whether it was Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold, Josh Allen, Josh Rosen, there's a name for you, and Lamar Jackson. (laughs) I don't think Josh Rosen is going to get picked. I'm not going to. No. (laughs) uh, um, All different circumstances, all different sets of talents. So you kind of kind of like the draft coming up this year, Trevor Lawrence, Justin uh, 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 Fields, Fields and, and, um, Zach Wilson from BYU, different, different types of talents. So it's okay. What, what do you think the quarterback position is in the NFL? And where do you go of that group? I don't know how you not take Josh Allen. He has been absolutely spectacular. The concern coming out was the completion percentage and the first two years didn't look like it was going to get better, which it typically doesn't in the NFL. He somehow he has flipped it to where he has been magnificent in the pocket. He still has the athleticism. Um, he's got some good talent around him as well. Yeah, given that, as brilliant as Lamar Jackson has been, yeah, I think it would be Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson. And then Baker Mayfield's obviously stepped up and playing well, playing better. I don't know if he's truly a first-round worthy pick in terms of a franchise quarterback. There's some potential there. Of course, Sam Darnold and Josh Rosen, I, I, no, it's just not there. <laughs> Uh, maybe Sam Donald will nick into the back end of the first. Who knows? Yeah, uh, really appreciate your time as always, Coach. Thank you so much, and look, enjoy the divisional weekend. Have a good weekend. You too, buddy.